we brought an upgrade to Zandvoort, and that did what we expected it to do. Um, we've got a few more bits to bring over the course of the next few races, um, and there's also quite a bit of optimization work still to do. What happened to Lewis during qualifying? Why was he not able to make it into Q3? And it looked like he was being impeded a lot. Well, I think first of all, this year has been a really difficult year in terms of qualifying, in terms of the conditions we face. We've had a lot of uh, circuits where we've seen wet conditions and drying tracks, and they always make for tricky qualifying. In this case, in Q2, the track was drying. Uh, although we were still going to be on the intermediates, we were only really going to get that very last run in Q2 on that new set of intermediates. If you looked at George's running, George got his first lap, and that was probably the quickest way to have got the time out of qualifying. In Lewis's case, uh, he was trying to position himself, and that's always really difficult at Zandvoort, because positioning yourself for that last lap, you have to do that out of turn 12, because you're sort of accelerating through 13 and 14 and onto the start-finish straight. And in this particular run, Lewis was really close to Sargent. He managed to jump Sargent, but found himself starting the lap only one and a half seconds behind Norris. And as a consequence of that, he wasn't able to get the best out of the car and had to back off. So that meant he needed to go on his next lap, um, and on that next lap, he probably had already taken the best out of the tyres, probably was starting to see an amount of overheating towards the end of the lap, and, and therefore just couldn't get the best out of the car. And while I think some of that is all about trying to find your right position on the track and dealing with the other cars around you, we are just unlucky with how we started that lap. Why did we not stop George and Lewis for intermediates near the start of the race, particularly with Lewis starting further back? Well, first of all, we, we clearly got it wrong in hindsight. I think what we're trying to do is to judge the, the sort of time it's going to take to fit intermediates in one pit stop, then go back to the slicks, versus the time lost and you just stay out on the slicks in the wet conditions. The weather forecast we had at the time suggested that the weather was going to be short-lived and not high-intensity rain. And we were gambling on the fact that the rain would come clear up fast enough that the time we'd lose on the slick tyres was less than the time we'd lose through having to make two pit stops. And clearly we got that wrong. What was interesting is um, Albon, who carried through on that gamble, uh, didn't pit for intermediates and therefore didn't have to re-pit for slicks. Actually, in some ways, it worked out for him. Uh, but in our case, we waited too long to go on to the intermediates, losing time. Uh, effectively having to do the pit stops, two pit stops we were going to have to do, but also losing the time by not making that decision quick enough. So we learn from that mistake and we move on for the future. With the foreseeable changing weather conditions, how many plans do the team have in place? Well, first of all, to deal with weather conditions, we don't really have a set plan. And in fact, what you're really looking at is what's the quickest tire to be on. And we talk about transition points. So a transition between a dry and an intermediate, and a transition between the intermediate and wet. And that's really based on lap time. But in trying to judge that, you have to sort of look at what information does the team have, what information does the drivers have. So normally in a race situation, the drivers will determine whether we need to go to a wet tyre, and the team will determine when the right time is to go back, because the team have got the best information on lap times, and the drivers have got the best information on the condition of the track, and generally when it's raining, the, the conditions are changing more quickly. So in the case we faced uh, at the beginning of the race, we could see the rain on the weather forecast, we could gauge the intensity and gauge how long it was going to last for, and therefore we were advising the drivers on what tyre we think we should be on, and looking for them to tell us that we got that wrong. So at the start of the race, we're thinking we could stay out on the slick tyres, gamble on the fact that the rain was going to be short and low intensity, and it was actually the driver saying, no, the rain conditions are too hard, we need to come in and we need to pit for the inter tyres. Why didn't George retire after the puncture? Well, I think when you've got mixed conditions, safety cars, all sorts of things can happen in a race. You never know what the outcome is going to be. And although there wasn't very many laps remaining, we could have had a safety car. It could have rained heavily, which could have meant that the team sort of spinning off or cars spinning off and would have given us chances. And also with the current generation of cars, we've got to a level of reliability now that running that extra five laps, there's nothing to save. You know, it's not like we're suddenly going to find that gives us reliability going forward. So our best option is always to try and stay on track, try and take up any opportunity that comes, and that's what we did. In terms of car performance, Lewis said the balance was good this weekend. How do we rate the car in terms of where we are really in performance? Well, I think first of all, what we really want to be doing is winning races. We want to have a car that's competing right at the front, uh, particularly with Max in the Red Bull. And I think where we are is we're we're battling for that second place. 
Uh, our pace was pretty close to Alonso in the Aston Martin, pretty close to Norris in McLaren. And I think what we really want to do is get ourselves clearly out in front of the other cars and, and to chase down Max at the front. I think what is encouraging is that we're starting to see a level of performance from the car that is consistent race to race. We're not seeing the ups and downs. We're able to get the best out of the car that we've got. And I think that's encouraging going forwards. What more performance do we expect to bring to the car over the coming races? Well, we brought an upgrade to Zandvoort and that did what we expected it to do. Um, we've got a few more bits to bring over the course of the next few races. Um, and there's also quite a bit of optimization work still to do. How can we get that sort of last bit of performance out of the car through setup? And also more importantly, what can we learn for things that we want to do over the winter for next year's car? What are the expectations for Monza? Well, first of all, when you've had a race where it's not quite gone the way you want it to go, to be able to race the following weekend is always a really good thing. Be able to put those demons to bed and move forward with the car. So, Monza is a very different circuit to Zandvoort. Zandvoort is pretty much maximum downforce. Monza is the lowest downforce circuit of the year. And therefore, we'll, we'll go down on wing level, so that will drop downforce and it will drop drag. And it will change the balance of the car quite a bit. Um, so we're working in the simulator this week, trying to get that balance right and trying to extract the best performance we can in Monza. As for whether we'll be quick or not quick there, I think it's always really difficult to predict with Monza because it's so different to the other circuits. It's not in your own performance you've got to be able to predict, but you've also got to be able to predict the performance of your competitors and that's obviously near impossible. So fingers crossed we have a good race this weekend, that we deliver the performance that's there in the car and, and hopefully get a good result.